Hello and welcome. Today's video is about the restoration of the portrait of Francis Reynolds, a portrait that was painted by Samuel William Reynolds. But today's video I'm going to focus on the cleaning process of the painting. I think it is a very interesting process to watch and I want to believe that you will enjoy to watch it too. I also will speak about the history that surrounds this painter. In the description notes of this video you will find the links for all the videos that are related with the restoration of this project. So today we have a lot of work to do, let's do it then. In previous episodes I shared with you the summary of the restoration of this painting. However, due to the limitations of a single video, I've decided to create multiple videos where I delve into specific and interesting steps of the restoration in more detail. You notice in the cleaning that the brush is already getting dirty. Because this painting is on a wood panel, there is no tears or holes in the canvas that need to be repaired. There are, however, several small areas where the paint has failed. But the paint in these areas doesn't require immediate consolidation. I can now move on to the next important step, which is the cleaning of the painting. There are various methods I can employ for this cleaning process. I can prepare solutions with specific cleaning agents, enzymatic or not, but today I'm using a product that is more like a gel, a paste, that has dissolved on it several other components and cleaning agents. When cleaning, I don't have to be very specific about starting with the background or the main motif of the painting, because at this moment, my goal is to remove the grime or dirt present on the surface of the painting. This grime or dirt is over the layer of varnish. In fact, that layer of varnish is isolating the painting and protecting it, and my current action doesn't reach the paint layer. In other words, the paint layer is protected by the layer of old varnish. So at this stage I'm careful but more relaxed, because I know I cannot arm the chromatic work done by the artist. In some of my previous videos I have already explained that the layer that darkens painting, commonly called grime, is a natural process that forms during the years of the painting's life. It is formed by the accumulation of particles of dust suspended in the air and also by smoke from fireplaces or cigarettes or even other kind of pollution that is present on the atmosphere. Nicotine is an agent responsible for this process. I imagine that many of you may also be thinking, but how is it possible? The painting is not flat on a table, it is hanging on a wall in a vertical position. How it is dirty? How it is that possible? Well, in fact, there is an explanation for that. All objects, including us as human beings, share one thing in common. They are under a phenomenon called static electricity. This phenomenon causes the electric particles present in the object, in this case, in the paint, to act as a magnet for other particles, in this case, the dirt particles that are in suspension. Over the years, these particles accumulate on the surface of the painting. 
Some greases in the atmosphere act as glue, and they are also attracted. And this is how this film of dirt can form during the life of the painting. can see I started with a small area. Once I am confident in the results, I can expand the area that I am cleaning. During the cleaning process, it is helpful to have a piece of fabric to periodically clean the brush. The brush tends to get quite dirty and if it accumulates too much grime, I may lose the total perception of the amount of dirt present on the surface that I am cleaning or whether I need to apply more or less pressure. Cleaning is the initial step in the restoration of this paint. Subsequent actions involve removing the old varnish and to accomplish this, I will use a solvent solution that I prepare by combining different solvents in varying proportions. The specific combination is the term based on the previous tests I conduct on the painting's varnish layer. This solution is always unique as it needs to be adapted to the painting that I am working on. Consequently, I use a combination of several solvents adjusting the proportions based on the compatibility, sometimes requiring the conjunction of more than three or four solvents. After removing the old varnish, I apply a new layer using a synthetic resin that enhances the original paint layer vibrancy. Following this, I proceed with additional steps such as repairing any holes or uneven areas with gesso or putty to ensure they are at the same level as the surrounding paint. Typically, after this procedure, I can apply another layer of varnish. The retouch process comes next, followed by the final varnish application. If no additional touch-ups are needed, the restoration process concludes here. It is essential to note that all applied products are reversible and can be undone. Samuel William Reynolds Jr., a British artist born in 1794, was a multi-talented artist in the 19th century. He worked in various mediums, including oil painting and watercolor, but it was mezzotint engraving where he truly excelled. Mezzotint is a remarkable engraving technique developed in the 17th century. It allows for the creation of prints with soft gradations of enriched velvety blacks. This method, also known as black manner, involves systematically pricking the entire surface of a metal plate with countless small holes that old ink and when printed produce large areas of tone. While information about Samuel William Reynolds Jr. is not so much, it is evident that he followed in his father's footsteps as a mezzotint engraver and a landscape painter. But about his father, yes, I got some facts. Since they have the same name, let's call the father Samuel Reynolds Sr. 
He was born on 4 July 1773 and he made a significant mark in the art world. Samuel Reynolds Sr. received his education at the Royal Academy and trained under mezzotint engravers Charles Howard Hodges and John Raphael Smith. In 1797, he showcased his mastery of engraving with the relief of Prince Adolphus in Marshall Freytag by Martha Brown. Over the next two decades, he produced numerous remarkable works, often after James Northcote's creation, such as The Vulture and Lamb, The Falconer, and the Leopards. His portfolio also included portraits of notable figures like Sir Joshua Reynolds, another realistic portrait painter, and Lady Mary Harcourt, a British aristocrat and philanthropist. Reynolds was known for his speed and skill in blending various engraving techniques. He also established connection within the theater world, where he frequently assisted the actor Edmund Keane in his makeup for the role of Othello. Reynolds was a versatile artist, exhibiting his works at prestigious institutions such as the Royal Academy and the British Institution. Notably, his landscape's art gained more recognition in France and Germany than in his native Great Britain. Samuel Reynolds Sr. had a family with his doctor Elizabeth marrying engraver William Walker and another doctor Frances showcasing her miniatures at the Royal Academy. Samuel William Reynolds Jr. continued his father's legacy as a skilled painter and mezzotint engraver, contributing to the rich artistic heritage established by his family. And this painting I am restoring now is attributed to him. Once the background is clean, I begin by cleaning the models or subject of the painting. For the face, I choose a different brush with softer bristles. And in this area, I'm extra careful and this caution intensifies during the varnish removal process. I have a strong passion for old paintings, but I especially like portrait paintings. Some artists in the past made really amazing works of art and they were able to capture so many details that would give indication about the personality of the individuals. I think this portrait is one example of that. When we look with attention to his eyes, we can feel that there is much more behind it. And in this portrait, we can feel such a sense of serenity and kindness. It is very special when an artist could make that message pass through his brush strokes. The accumulation of grime in his face and in the painting in general is heavy. But through my patient insistence, we start to be able to see better all the expression that is behind. His hair is very well painted too, and in this portrait shows a gentleman wearing a wig. In the 17th century, wigs were indeed a popular fashion accessory for men, especially among the aristocracy and upper classes in Europe. Wearing wigs became a symbol of social status, wealth and fashion. The trend was largely influenced by the French court where King Louis XIV started losing his hair in his 20s and began wearing elaborate wigs to cover his baldness. This sparked the fashion craze that spread through Europe. Wigs were made from a variety of materials including human hair, animal hair and even straw. 
The finest wigs were crafted from natural human hair, often imported from Europe or obtained from people willing to sell their hair. These wigs were highly prized and could be quite expensive. As the demand for wigs grew, so did the market for fake wigs. Not everyone could afford a wig made from genuine woman hair. So wig makers began using materials like horse hair, goat hair and even wool to create more affordable alternatives. These fake wigs allowed a broader range of people to participate in the fashion trend. Wigs in the 17th century were not just a means of covering up baldness, but were also considered a fashion statement. They came in various styles, colors and size, and some were incredibly elaborated and towering. Wearing a wig became a common practice for men for all ages and background, and the fashion persisted well into the 18th century, before gradually declined in the 19th century. Painting is now clean and free from the grime and it is ready for the following actions towards its restoration. It will be great if I hear your thoughts on this cleaning process in the comments. Share your opinions or let me know what you'd like to explore in the future videos. 
If you found value in this video, don't forget to show your support by leaving a like, subscribing and ringing the notifications bell, ensuring you won't miss the transformations I have to show you in the future. Thank you for joining me on this artistic voyage. Until next time, stay happy and inspired.